So we've got a couple of examples written on the whiteboard. Um, dividing by 5, we've got 20, then 25, then 30. Those, of course, are multiples of 5 or whole multiples of 5. And so these should be well-known number facts to our students. But between them, we have other numbers. And so our students need to realize, and of course, we'll help them understand this using materials and so on, that if we have a number between the whole number multiples, we can still divide it by 5, but we'll just have some left over. So dividing 21 by 5 means we're going to have four collections, if you like, depends on the model that we're using for division, um, four lots of 5 and one left over. I don't particularly care how students record that. I mean, you want consistency in your classroom, but whether you write a capital R or a small one or an REM, or it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, the next will be 4 remainder 2, 4 remainder 3, 4 remainder 4, and then we get to 5. You know that, I know that. But we want our students to see the patterns that are involved here. So this might be a, a, a nice exercise for students to do. Record a sequence of numbers like this. Now I've picked this sequence, as you can see, out of the basically out of the middle of the five times number facts, and ask them to record the answers to each one of the question, uh, sorry, each one of the numbers divided by five. They should see there's a pattern there. You could talk about what the remainders mean. You could talk about the fact that the remainder here, that uh, the remainders are one, two, three, and four, and that one doesn't have a remainder. And then we have remainder one, two, three, and four, and then that doesn't have a remainder. And we could ask the students, you know, what's the biggest remainder you can get? If you're going to divide by an, a number and you're going to have a remainder, what's the largest remainder? Of course, if we're dividing a whole number, the remainder will be one less than the divisor that will be the biggest. So when we're dividing by 5, we may have a remainder of 4, but of course we can't have a remainder of 5. Okay, so these are relatively straightforward. You could use 10 frames with these, simply because the 10 frames show two rows of 5, and so that would be a nice way of showing multiples of 5 and then some left over. So there again, um, 10 frames once again come to our rescue, I suppose. Looking at dividing by 10, this is even more straightforward. Now we have more possibilities for remainders. Obviously we've got remainders from 1 to 9 this time, 9 being the next number below 10. Um, but dividing by 10, as we all know, is, re is really straightforward. Of course we would discuss this with the students. We would ask them why it's straightforward, why is it so easy. And in this case you could use base 10 material. So if you had say for example 54 using base 10 blocks obviously you'll have 5 10 blocks and 4 left over what's the significance of that well if we're dividing by 10 one model is to say how many tens can we take away repeated subtraction we can take 5 tens away what's left 4 what do you notice about the number that you started with well we started with 54 we divided by whoops I need an equal sign divided by 10 the answer is 5 remainder 4 what do you see what is um, sorry what is the same about the answer in the question well we've got a 5 here and a 5 here and a 4 there and a 4 there why would that be and of course it's all about the fact that our numbering system is a base 10 numbering system which means we collect tens when we collect a group of 10, we count it as 1, 10. And we get an extra 1 in the 10 column. So the 5 in the 10s column means 5 collections of 10, etc, etc. So there's a really nice connection here between place value and the dividing by 10. It's a pity they aren't all this easy. Dividing by 10 is obviously one of the easier divisors.